In this video, I'm going to be giving a very thorough review of the very popular affiliate SEO content website, Gear Hungry. This site was once run by some acquaintances in the affiliate SEO community, and in its heyday was making six figures per month, primarily focused on Amazon affiliate. Eventually it was flipped for low eight figures, which was a huge payout for the seller. And during this time, according to Ahrefs, it was bringing in nearly 2 million visitors per month. But that didn't last long as it started losing traffic. Then in the December 2020 update, got nearly decimated. Some serious nuclear bombs are dropped on this traffic graph. So I'm gonna take a look and try to figure out what went wrong. And if you like content like this, let me know by smashing that like button. Unlike making this video, smashing the like button doesn't take any effort at all. So hook a brother up. Let's get started. All right, before we jump into things and really start debugging the site, why don't we just get to know it a little bit by taking a look at the homepage itself and explaining what the site does, what it targets, and just checking things out, right? So we can see Gear Hungry logo. We got a custom slider up here. It probably goes through latest posts or most popular posts or whatever they want to get people looking at. We have um, ways of contact. I got a newsletter sign up. Let's check out their Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. So they have real accounts, decent chunk of followers, um, little amount of engagement on their posts, not much at all. Um, see Pinterest, a lot of pins going on here. Oops, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Facebook page, yeah, pretty standard. No engagement on the Facebook posts. And Instagram, okay, decent chunk of followers following a decent chunk of people. Um, to be honest, I don't know how Instagram works. I've never signed up, so I have no idea if it's getting, oh, okay, we got some stuff going on here. We got some, some hearts and some comments here. So I guess that's a good thing, but as you can see here, for, for a website that gets a ton of traffic um, and for at one point had a ton of traffic, it, didn't really have that much of a social activity. So despite people thinking that you need these kind of things to really succeed, I see evidence of it all the time that you don't really need a social presence. You don't need other stuff going on. But let's do, just do a little quick scan down here. So we have latest posts. It looks like they're um, reviewing some gloves here. Um, culture manual, some other lamps. All over the place. So it looks like you know we're doing, we're looking at a bunch of like Outdoor dude stuff right here. We'll get some um, beard trimmers. The guy's shaving his dome with that. Um, some beer stuff. It definitely looks like a male-oriented site, but it's all over the place, right? We're looking at books. We're looking at gloves. We're looking at a whole bunch of stuff. Featured, so these are probably their most highly sought-after, best-to-monetize posts. If they're putting them right here, right? So they're making sure that a bunch of link juice is just going directly to this page. This is just going to filter through the latest posts. Buying guides, and this is probably another static section where they've kind of done categorized categories here. And they've categorized by gear, knives, fitness, tech, home. So let's see what happens if we click down into home or style. Okay, cool. So they got this, they got everything categorized. And let's see, are these indexed? That's a good question. Site like home. So they do have an index, so it's cool. They can build links to these pages and uh, spread the link juice to these individual pages as well. Pretty cool way to do it. And it uh, looks like these are infinite scrolls, so these will just keep going and going and going until we hit the end of the category. And it looks like the same over here too. Go down a little bit further, and we've got the, uh, the footer here and standard stuff. So as you can see here, this seems to be Somewhat male-oriented site, not necessarily. I mean, we got some other stuff in here, and some of this stuff is female or, or unisex. It doesn't really matter. But it's categories all over the place. We're looking at clothing. We're looking at kitchen stuff. We're looking at home stuff. We're looking at health stuff. It's all over the place, and that's one thing that we should definitely note. Okay, so whereas before I used the site colon command to see if a category page was indexed, now I'm using site colon on the domain name itself to see how many pages they have indexed in. So they have 5,260 pages indexed. They might actually have more pages indexed than this, but this is how many Google is saying that they're indexing, which is a tremendous effort to produce 5,260 5, pages of content. It's absolutely insane amount of effort. We have one website in the portfolio right now, and we're, we're going pretty hard on it, and we're producing three pieces of content per day, so 90 per month. 
And just to put that into a frame of reference, if we were to open this calculator app, we take 5260 divided by 90. So it would take us 54 months in order to hit this from scratch, which would be 4.8 years. So hats off to these guys. That is a tremendous amount of content. I think it was a big part of their success on being able to just build up so much content. And there's, even though they're a general website and they're talking about a billion different things, they're probably talking about a billion different things a lot within those categories as well. And we'll take a look later and see, okay, they, they probably talked about fishing or they probably talked about coffee. Can they talk about coffee? Have they talked about enough coffee? We'll, we'll check that out. And with 5,260 pages, there's a good chance they have. So let's take a look at what they got indexed here and we're probably just gonna find a bunch of review content, review, 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 review. Um, yep, a bunch here, um, high index. I got this set to 100 pages at a time, but one thing I'm just noticing is they're being pretty good about their indexing. I don't see any author pages index. As you know, they index their categories, which they're fine with. They're, they've designed them in a specific way, and they've probably linked building to them, so it's pretty slick. Um, one other thing we can take a look at in title, and if we look at in title, and then we do best. Okay, so. Out of 5,000 pages, at least 2.2 .2 have the word best in the title, so some kind of review. I mean, there's other kind of review content you can do. You can just have a single review of a product. You can do verses. These are all affiliate pages, but at least in this format, best of and roundup posts, they have at least uh, almost half the content on their site is that. Just looking at it from this perspective, we'll look at it in other ways too. So let's jump over and actually dig into what possibly could have gone wrong in the previous update or just any kind of issues or good things or bad things we can find with the site. Now, the first thing I want to take a look at is this graph right here. And not too long ago, I posted in my YouTube channel an analysis on the most latest Google Core algorithm update. And this was taken from the Affiliate Lab and I shared this graph. If you want to see the whole story, Check out the link in the card above, or I left a link to the video in the description as well, but definitely check that out. It's my complete analysis on what happened with this update. But this is a very important graph from it. And let me just explain it real quick to you. So we have on the y-axis the change percentage in traffic. We have the zero point here. So anything above this line means that they increase in traffic. And the, anything below this means that a site decreased in traffic. And then every little dot here is a different website. And what we have here on the x-axis is the percentage of monetized pages. So we found that if you had a high proportion of monetized pages, and we're denoting a monetized page by if it has the words best or review in the title, or it has outbound affiliate links, we're considering that to be a monetized page. And you can see that we have a trend line right here. Now let's take a look at this graph too. Um, we have a few websites here, but the important factor we want to look at right here is gear hungry. And let me just explain what these bars represent. So blue means the percentage of URLs that are uplifted. So obviously you can see that there's a very small uh, percentage of pages that actually increase in traffic. The amount of pages that decreased was over 50%. So as we know, they got hit pretty bad in the update. But uh, check out the percentage of affiliate pages, again, denoted by best review in the title or outbound affiliate links. So more than 75% of them were monetized. So if the theory is true on the previous slide, then it's not surprising. They are in this range where there's much more dots below the 0% line and the trend is going downward as well. Here's another theory that I wanted to entertain and take a look at that I think deserves some merit. If we go back and look at Gear Hungry as well, and we look at just Look at the categories here, just see how broad it is. Gear, grooming, health, home, outdoors. This is literally everything. Um, I think we're missing pets and stuff like that, but it's pretty wide, wide covering, wide ranging. Okay, so we can agree with that. Now let me pull up this report from InLinks. So InLinks is a great tool run by Dixon Jones. And uh, basically what it does, or one of the many things that it does is it uses Google's NLP and pulls out and it looks at entities and categorizations and topics that Google thinks a website is about. So 
Dixon was kind enough to send me this report on Gear Hungry, and what it does is it looks at the top 100 pages, I believe it ranks them according to SEMrush traffic or something like that. So it gets these top 100 pages, and then it tells us via this report which categories the, the website is based on these 100 top pages. And just, let's just take a look. So going from the top here, uh, got how to, gear, right, learning, affiliate marketing, of course, um, purchasing, choice. So, so this all has to do with like what type of business this is. This is an affiliate business, right? But if we get into some of the stuff down here, so it's about toys, it's about office, it's about procurement, gifts, hiking, survival training, games, all this kind of stuff. And the interesting thing about this is we can see visually that this website's about like every single topic. And we can see even from an NLP perspective that it's, it's about a wide, wide range of topics, right? There's a, a theory is going on about, and um, I know that Gail from Authority Hacker shares a theory that it, there's a certain level of authority that's required to, to rank in any given niche, potentially. So this niche is a very, very wide niche, and the competitors in this niche might be people like the wire cutter, it might be you know, like Forbes and stuff like that. So if this theory holds any weight, then there's an authority requirement that is necessary to compete in this niche, and this niche is basically everything, then sure, Gear Hungry is doing great as a site, I believe it's a DR70, but it's definitely not at the Forbes level, for example. Okay, so we're in our good old buddy Ahrefs, and I've typed in Gear Hungry in the Site Explorer, and I was right, it's a DR70 site. Tons of referring domains, so nearly 8,000 referring domains. It's pretty good. Um, one thing to take, a, take note from this is that with this many referring domains, DR70 is great, but I have about 2,000 referring domains, and I have a DR75, so it's perhaps at least the quality of link that I have going to Diggity Marketing is a little bit superior, but I don't think this has anything to do with the reflection on Gear Hungry and saying like they didn't build good links because we'll take a look at that shortly and they certainly did. But they have a lot of referring domains in order to hit this DR70, which means they probably have a, a lot of not that awesome links, which could have been automatically generated too. We, we have no idea, right? Um, what else can we take a look at here? We can take a look at organic search and you can see what's really happened. I believe this website was flipped you know, somewhere around here or here. Um, big flip, and then things didn't go the right way. But the, the really significant part is what happened in this December update, where it's just a steep, steep cliff, right? I mean, it's, it was losing traction here, but this is just banhammer action. Um, we can see down here what are the sites that it's uh, put up against. And not surprisingly, it's these sites that uh, Ahrefs thinks are top competitors are all over the place too. Okay, so Gear Moose, a tool site, um, outdoor site, a fitness site, a survival site, travel site. So like, yeah, it's all, it's all over the place, right? Um, Ahrefs thinks it's competing against all niches pretty much. Next thing I want to do is jump over to the site audit. And I ran a crawl on Gear Hungry and just wanted to see what are the technical SEO problems that can be found that Ahrefs picked up. And Ahrefs is the tool of choice that I use for site audits. We also have Screaming Frog, we also have Site Bulb, but we're in Ahrefs so often, and I really like the reports, and it does a pretty good job of doing a technical SEO audit. So this is my tool of choice, so I'm just gonna show you what kind of things that can, it can find. First off, the health scores you know, are pretty low. This is just an overall indicator of how many things are checked off the technical SEO list, and there's a lot of room for improvement. We can see URLs without errors. There's, um, you know, 54% are fine, but there's a lot of URLs that have issues. And we could just come down here and see what are the top issues. So if we look at, we can go look at all issues, or we can just look at top issues. Top issues is probably the easiest way to look at this and see what are the biggest things that are going on. So meta just missing meta descriptions on a lot of pages and. As far as I know, these aren't pages that you should probably be ignoring meta descriptions on. Let me just take a look here. So we have oh, a bunch of category pages. So a lot of category pages are missing meta descriptions. But as we know, these are index pages. So if we're feeding a page to Google and saying, hey, take a look at this. Let's, let's abide by its rules and do all the things that it wants to see. 
Uh, lots of orphan pages, so pages without any internal links. Let's see if these are pages that really want this to happen to. I highly doubt it. I mean, so these are some of their review pages, and any one of these could be making them money, or at least they want it to make money. And as you can see here, organic traffic is nearly zero for all these pages. It's not surprising because there's no way for the crawler to get to it. There's no way for any link juice to get to it or anything like that. Uh, page has no follow and do follow and coming internal links. That was fine, whatever. Um, page has links to broken page. Definitely want to clean these up. 404 pages. A lot of stuff here. You know, this is the way I look at technical SEO is that these are all kind of things that are little little knickknack things, annoying things. But you just want to get these fixed. It's just someone's bad couple of days where they need to log in and do all these meticulous things over and over again. But once you have these knocked out, I mean then you can cross that off your list of potential things that are hurting your site. Do I think these technical SEO problems are the reason that Gear Hungry had trouble in December? No, absolutely not, because these issues probably existed on December 3rd and December 4th. It's not like all of a sudden they showed up on December 5th and then now they started to kick in, but it definitely didn't help the situation. I would definitely recommend cleaning this up. Now, as promised, I mentioned I wanted to take a look at these linky dinks here. So I'm in the referring domain section of Site Explorer. And first thing I typically do is just change link type to do follow. So now that it's sorted here, I can see everything's sorted by DR. So their highest TR links are, are up here. And then these are all do follow. So there might be multiple ones from the same site. So let's take a look at some of these. I, I think always reverse engineering some of your competitors or sites that are doing well. You can learn some cool things. Uh, I'm not going to lie. We looked at Gear Hungry a long time ago to peel out some of their techniques. Really cool one that they're doing is getting links from Kickstarter. So whether or not they're reaching out to people that are getting or have campaigns in motion or these are campaigns that went live and then Gear Hungry reviewed them later, it doesn't really matter. The, the fact of the matter is they got a link from the listing, from which is do follow DR91. And um, I'm not going to lie, we, we use it ourselves. LA Times, so let's see how they got this link. Cool. Um, so they got some kind of story here, and yeah, oh God, come on. I don't want to get into that. Forget that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna unblock that thing. So we're moving on. Um, Entrepreneur.com. Okay, so they got a single article here going to a Starbucks Verissimo. Um, looks like they might have got an organic link. Everything, everyone's gating these things. I'm sorry, I can't look at these properly, guys. But um, here's a just a high level overview of what I have to say is they've they got a lot of good links. If you look at anytime you look at a referring domain report and you see a DR90 something at the top, and by the time you get to the bottom, it's still in the 80 range, like you're looking at some good links here. And some of these were probably gone organically. When you start just ranking for everything, they start to come in, come in for everything. Like on autopilot. Um, but I'm sure they got some of these themselves with a little bit of effort. Um, Thrive Global, this is a typical hard link that they, they answered some kind of roundup question. Uh, interesting. Let's, let's check out this one. I'm curious now. The guys at Gear Hungry. Okay, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they got this one, to be honest, but all good links, man. Um, yeah, and just to mention, this one can easily be gotten in Haro. They're always doing journalist requests. In a nutshell, though, um, I know I mentioned before that they have a lot of links, and they have a DR70, and expected higher DR. It doesn't matter, man. They have a lot of great links, and even if they have links that aren't that bad, you can stomach having links that aren't that bad when you have a set like this. So well done. All right, so let's go back over to Gear Hungry, and I want to look at some single page on-site SEO. So I just want to see how optimized the single page is on their website. Um, so let's go down here and find this guy, best gym equipment for your home in 2021. And uh, let's first scan this thing and see what we can see visually from it. Now, looking at up here at the top, um, I believe that at one point, let me just double check. Uh, let's look at something else. Cold brew coffee makers. 
I believe at one point they had the layout where there's like three items right here. Um, I had to load this up in way back to see if this is true, but I believe they had the different format. Maybe this was changed um, after the update and they thought this is something that might have been hurting them. But um, I could be wrong, that's just what I recall that they had that layout. Uh, but anyways, let's see here. Um, what we have for published in June 1st, 2018. So they got a little bit of EAT going on here. Mentioned that's written by a fitness expert, Ben Coleman. Um, this little disclaimer saying we might earn a commission. Typical stuff these days. Let's read this in intro paragraph. Uh, if you're like most men, you're in it for the workout, personal health, lasting and your mind. Okay, so just some primer. Um, Self-conscious when it comes to working out, but having the full effort of a home gym seems appealing for you. Okay, so I don't know. I think like this intro is, it takes a long time for this to say, you guys are about to find out what the best home gym equipment is. Um, just buttering up a little bit too long. And I think in this day and age with attention deficit disorder and people fighting for your attention on different platforms, I think we need to get to the point right away and just say, there's a lot of gym equipment and we're about to tell you which one the best one is for your home, right? Something nice and spiffy like that. Uh, obviously you can have better copy than these, what I just uh, said off the cuff, but I think it's just a little bit too fluffy and let's just check here. Um, yeah, this one's the same. You wanna be a hipster, you're into the latest trends. Um, then we finally get into coffee. Okay, coffee, cold brew coffee scene. Uh, you're finally looking to get your hands on one. Okay, so it takes a while again to get to it. I would just say let's tone that down and get right to it. Um, is this the reason they got hit? Absolutely not again, but just something that I would do. Okay, so let's check out the rest of this. And one thing that you'll notice is they have a bit of a template going on. So let's see, we have 10, 25 items reviewed here. It looks like they're about the same amount of content here. They have key feature specifications. Let's see the cold brew guys. How many they got? Yeah, so 10 here, a little bit of content, key features and specifications. If this is a template, which I hope it is, because if you're uploading content at scale and you're getting to 5,000 pages, you need templates in order to make it happen. You absolutely need for your content uploaders and your writers to expect the same thing every time so they can grind these things out and get these things written quickly and uploaded quickly. So that's probably why we see the same format over and over again. Is it is Google expecting different types of content and on for different queries? Probably. But if if I were taking an approach like them and we are on different sites, like I would definitely have a template like this. Um, another thing to take a note is they got this check price on Amazon button. Um, I don't remember that being there. I think maybe this was a change too in order to you know, try to be more transparent or something like that. But in general, I've talked about this multiple times. Don't tell people where they can get something because guess what? They don't need to click that and get that cookie if they know where to get it. They'll get it on their own time and it's not right now sometimes. Okay, so we've looked at this page now. In order to see how well it's optimized, I typically use Surfer for something like this. So I've already loaded up this query, it's done its analysis. And if you wanna learn more about how to use Surfer, I have a small video where I talk about how I use Surfer. And I will link that in the card and the description. But in the meantime, so let me just explain what I've done is I've highlighted that I wanna take a look at these three URLs, so Men's Health, High Consumption, Tom's Guide, these are the ones I wanna compare against. I typed in gear hungry and I want to click this for the audit, right? So a few things I want to take a look at first. The first thing I look at is words and paragraphs. So as we can see here, compared to these top three guys that are similar that they want to compete against, they're really just overriding it and by quite a lot. And I'm sure they can just get into the ballpark instead of reviewing 25 of these things, get it down to 10 and that'll cut things down. So once you adjust the content length, you're gonna to wanna to update true density because if true density is basically looking at the frequencies of keywords that are in the content 
compared against the other people that are ranking, the, uh, compared against those three competitors I, I took a look at. And anything marked in NLP, this is coming from Google's NLP algorithm. So Google is finding that these are extremely important entities and keywords and phrases that are present, present in the content. And so they're telling you, giving you guidance on how much you should be writing them in there. So they do it by phrases and single words. So if we look at these the word counts, so like stuff like Amazon.com, workouts, treadmill, stuff like that, like they're really under-optimized. And in some cases, very, very over-optimized. So the really bad ones is when you're over-optimized. And so here they're using something 54 times where the suggested range is 34 to 45. I've seen very, very big improvements by fixing over-optimizations on single end phrases. But like I said before, you don't want to touch this now. You want to fix the word count issue first because if you started tweaking the densities and then completely just cut out a bunch of content, you would just have to do that again. So let's look at some other guidance that Surfer's giving. Um, a lot of blue stuff, exact keyword in H1, not necessarily uh, important. I mean, they have the exact keyword in the title already, so I don't think it's that important to get in the H1 as well. Let's see, partial keywords with exact keyword in H1, that's fine. Um, they, they do say remove a bunch of paragraphs, remove a bunch of strong elements and a bunch of images. That's just because they have really long content. And if they brought it down to the normal level that everyone else is writing with, that these would probably be taken care of as well. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Characters meta description is fine. The site is a little bit slow. Whoa, whoa, yeah, it's just kidding a little bit. Yeah, it seems that there's a little bit of a delay. I mean, if you look at load time, it's not that bad. I mean, time to first buy it seems, seems kind of bad, but that's just because these sites are just super, super fast. But I'm surprised that it takes so long to load, especially because it does definitely look like they're, they're working with something custom. and It doesn't look like they're using a theme builder or anything like that. So I expect it to be a little bit faster. Before I jump into multi-page on-site SEO and architecture and interlinking and all that kind of stuff, I, I wanted to come back to something I forgot to talk about. And if you do look at this article, it's pretty typical, right? Like this is a run of the mill affiliate article that you might see and they're probably you know, looking at the reviews on Amazon and doing a little bit of research to see what, it, what kind of reviews already exist on the internet and then crafting a review out of them. And a lot of people argue that, okay, they haven't done anything in addition. They haven't added any extra value. They haven't really tested this. I don't see any YouTube videos of them unboxing. I don't, I don't see any intricate rating system that they've invented themselves and how they cross correlate that with the research behind uh, yoga balls and all this kind of stuff. And to be honest, I don't, I disagree with theories that this actually matters. I think Google is figuring out what is the, co the corpus for a particular search result based on who's already ranking, what kind of words should show up on the page. And I don't think they're able to recognize effort quite yet. So Probably not the like the best content in the world. I, I don't think there's any algorithm to check for that at this point in time. And remember before I said I, I believe that they had a theme where they were hosting the best at the top right here. Yeah, I, I just checked in archive.org. This is from no, was it this sometime in, in 2020. Why does this not show? Um, anyways, but this is some sometime in 2020. You can clearly see that they had this here, and it looks like they remo removed it. Um, not exactly sure when, because Archive isn't taking stamps of them that often. But you can see it definitely existed at one point in time. They removed it probably because they maybe maybe it happened after the update. And they thought, okay, let's just clean up everything that it could possibly be. But if you go check out my video on the last core algorithm update. You'll see that I, I ran some correlation studies and I did check to see if there was any kind of correlation with sites that got hit and having both display ads and affiliate links above, above the fold and I didn't see any correlation. So whereas I think it's you get hit, you do anything you can to debug these kind of things. I don't think this was the thing because I didn't see any correlation come up. Let's start the conversation on multi-page on-site SEO, interlinking, all that good stuff, topical coverage, topical maps, topical relevance, whatever you want to call it, right? So the, the issue here is that Gear Hungry is a gigantic site talking about 100 bazillion different topics. And I'm sure it has a page on best coffee makers. In fact, I know this. And the question is, 
Sure, you can write a post on what is the best coffee maker, but are you an authority on coffee? How much have you talked about coffee? Can you even be considered to be an expert on coffee? So I did a site called Gear Hungry and typed in the word coffee, and I saw 4,000 results. So there's, that's, there's no way that 4,000 out of 6,000 of the pages are, are about coffee. So let's whittle that down to in title. And that seems more realistic. So, so about 62 pages have to do with coffee. And I would say, I mean, I don't know what the requirements that are behind Google's algorithm, but that seems a decent amount of content. I mean, they've, they've talked about coffee a lot. They've probably talked about coffee as much as a specifically themed niche coffee site, site does. So they've, they've given it a good effort. So let's see how much they've interlinked to their best coffee maker page. So I've gone to Ahrefs Site Explorer and I've looked at internal backlinks. I think this feature came out a year or so ago and really good, really good feature, very handy. Um, if you're wondering why these are strict strike through, I have a plugin that uh, basically just strike through on any no follow links um, in case you're wondering. But let's take a look here. Um, if we are trying to establish relevance, we want to tell Google that our coffee maker machine is about coffee and by to do that, we're going to take other coffee pages and link to it. So they got a link from the home page. They also got a link from the best alarm clock page, which is not relevant at all. Um, best coffee beans, as that's definitely relevant. Uh, kitchen gadgets is, is relevant for sure. Best straight razor, not too relevant. Coffee subscription, relevant. So let's see what they've done here and with these uh, straight razors and the best alarm clock. Okay, so what is the anchor text here? So machines. Okay, so this just happens down here in the related reads. Machine. Okay, what's this one? Straight razor. Straight razor is your mornings. So your mornings. Okay, so okay, so this is about razors and they've just been talking about um, who needs noisy energy wasting electric razors when something like this is available enhanced the quality of your morning. So I would say this is like a hardcore stretch in order to get this to work out. Like they haven't even got relevance on the sentence level. Now, uh, that said, we've run a lot of tests on this and at a certain authority level for a website, you can get away with this. In fact, there's no negative impact seen by my test of, from sending a link like this to another coffee page. Does it help? Not exactly sure on that either, but it definitely doesn't hurt. Um, but I what I would have done is I would have focused on just looking and seeing these pages that have coffee in the URL or the title and just saying, okay, well, let's stick to these guys. Or using a tool like InLinks where you can put in the URL and it's going to tell you what Google thinks the topic of the page is. Now, here's a consideration. Maybe something happened in the December update where they're more strict on the interlinking that's done between pages. And if you have a link from a Panini Press page, it could be messing up the relevance that's conveyed over to a coffee maker page. So let's, let's see, coffee machine. Yeah, I mean, so this is like the, the other page that we just saw. So, so turn on your coffee machine and start preparing breakfast. So it's like really, it doesn't even have a sentence or paragraph level relevance. This is something that's worth testing and worth taking a look at. It's something that we're investigating right now at LeadSpring with some, some tests and some consultations and some in-house meetings and stuff like that to try to determine, you know, what is there a way to do interlinking that's best done tool-driven or based on topics or based on entities or something like that. So this is definitely something we take a look at. Now I just want to take a look at EAT. So we're going to head on over to this About page and just take a look at what they've gotten up here and it says that okay cool so they've, they've talked about gear hungry's launch in 2011 acquired in 2019 lola digital media who owns these other brands here um, these are all this this one used to be pretty big it got hit in the update as well um, so, sorry to hear about this lola um, I'm, sh I'm sure you're gonna get this figured out but let's take a look. So they, it looks like, I don't know if these experts were there on the site before uh, the acquisition or these people were installed um, after Lola acquired, but these look like these are pretty real people with their own blogs and um, they got Instagram profiles. They don't 
look fake at all. I don't see any uh, dead giveaway. This person does not exist, stuff like that. Uh, let's look at the page source. Let's look at their schema. One thing I really like to do is go to town with about page schema to just force Google into, okay, so they, I, I would definitely say that they have room to grow with adding some schema and using some same as properties to tie everything together. Let's see, do they have it? Let me just add it here. Mm, no, it's pretty, it's pretty standard. This is just installed with Yoast and stuff like that, but they can get way more fancy with uh, telling Google all the, all the connections between their businesses and address and all that kind of stuff. I don't think EAT is any part of the algorithm right now. I don't think you need to prove that Chloe is an expert in traveling or, or rock climbing or whatever that is. But I think that you do need to show that there's at least some people tied to the website. Yes, it's definitely clearly visible that there's some writers associated with the website. We know who owns the business. So they've established that. I would just take it a little bit further with the schema. All right, so here's just a quick summary on what we've seen so far and what I definitely recommend that they do to recover the site. So the biggest culprits that I've seen are the amount of monetized affiliate content on the site in proportion to the rest of the site. Single page on-site SEO, just taking a look using Fulex Surfer to just look at things on a page-by-page -page basis and see if they're optimized properly. And then the wild interlinking issue. I, again, I, don't, I think out of all three of these things, it's probably the first one that's the main issue here. But uh, the other two, I would just definitely want to cross these off the list as well. I mean, it seems like they're taking action anyways with them completely changing the layout of the pages and stuff like that. So they're probably in the business of doing anything and everything that they can. So these are definitely things I would look at too. Now, I didn't expect to find much wrong with their SEO, and I didn't find that much wrong. I, I think, like again, I think the big thing here was this percentage of uh, monetized affiliate content. But... In terms of the other things I saw, like I saw much more good stuff than bad stuff. I would say that they did an excellent job with their SEO. And what I think has happened here is that there's been good drivers behind this website that were just blindsided by this new update requirement, if my analysis holds true. I'm not saying that the correlation study that I did or the theory that I have or anything about it is set in stone and it's guaranteed. Everything must be taken with a grain of salt. But if it turns out to be true, I think it just blindsided a lot of people, including these good SEOs. And I'm not throwing the, this new company who purchased the, the website under the bus or the owners before it. I think they both did a great job, but it's just, um, just something new happened, right? This is SEO. Uh, one thing about this is that Google might ease back. I think that they're probably going to ease back this requirement. I think a lot of this, there's a lot of junk results on the internet right now. A lot of affiliate keywords you're just seeing press release sites ranking and newspapers ranking. Why? Because these sites have a ton of authority and they don't have much affiliate content. Just people have figured out how to write press releases or we or bribe journalists or whatever they need to do to, to get on these sites. So they've been using them as parasite SEOs. So there's a lot of bad results and I think Google's gonna have to dial back some of this in order to fix a lot of that. But I would definitely be proactive about this and take matters in my own hands and make sure before the next update that I'm at least moving in the right direction. So my recommendation is to definitely publish info content exclusively. So stay away from the review and the best keywords and all that kind of stuff and just stick to info content, how-to guides and stuff like that. And best of luck in the next update.